it's Miley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, January 14th. Okay, so we have the moon in Pisces here all day, and of course, Pisces energy being the last sign of the zodiac. We have some processing to do, we have some feeling to do, we have some healing to do on a lot of different levels, if you will. Now, the moon in this Pisces energy, this is emotional, this is intuitive. We can get overwhelmed, overstimulated. We are hypersensitive. There is a strength from our intuition, our higher selves coming in in a much more powerful powerful way than we've been used to, especially over these last few weeks. So the moon in Pisces, yes, is about kind of recognizing where it is that we're leaving some of these things behind before we jump into a new lunar energy, which of course, when we dive into Aries energy, that is the beginning of a new emotional cycle, a new emotional awareness, a new emotional goal. So there's definitely going to be some highs and lows here to the day in order for us to to emotionally process and refine those particular emotions, especially with new intuitive insights coming in, painting a bigger picture on some of the details that have been hidden away from our view. So we have 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Pisces comes up to, bumps into, teams up with Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over our roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline in this Pisces energy has been challenging our beliefs, really helping us to kind of destroy, collapse the old system of beliefs that was very limiting for our growth, for our evolution, for our progress. And now we are building something better in the place of the things that are no longer supporting us moving forward and evolving. So this could kind of manifest in two different ways and likely a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. First of all, we have to feel the weight the heaviness. And of course, that should be no issue. We've been sitting in that throughout Capricorn season, especially since the new moon in Capricorn popped off here on the 11th. We need to feel the weight. We need to feel the endings. We need to feel the closure. We need to feel the sadness, the grief in a lot of ways. We have to feel that funk in order to actually appreciate where it is that we need to kind of process through it where it is that we need to kind of, I'm going to say, revamp ourselves with a new narrative, with a new perspective. The column B comes in because this is very releasing, very, I'm going to say, purging, if you will, those heavier vibrations, those heavier thoughts and emotions in order for a new emotional cycle to actually take place. And again, this is kind of like building us up in preparation for us making a move, for us building towards a new goal. But we have to kind of release the fragmented versions of self and those wants, needs, and desires, those emotions, those thought patterns, in order for us to really get on the same path, the same wavelength with what it is that we want to build towards, what it is that we want to manifest, what it is that we want to bring to life. So the whole, you know, sentence that I usually throw out there, like you have to feel it in order to heal it. This is definitely one of those instances where we do need to sit in the funk and recognize the heaviness, the weight, and then we have the ability to release it, to purge it, and feel much lighter, much brighter because of it. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating tension and conflict with the north node in Aries energy. That is our soul path. That is our destiny point. The tension and conflict is being illuminated because, again, emotionally speaking, we're still stuck in the past. We still have some particular karmic chapters that we need to tie up. We have some realizations that we have to have. We have some emotions that we have to process. And so the North Node in Aries energy trying to kind of dangle that carrot for us to follow to get on the right path in a new direction, in a new kind of mindset, if you will, we're not ready for it. We're too heavy. We're too weighted. We still have some process to do and therefore we're not sure on what how to even move forward carrying this particular karmic weight on our heart space so this is going to illuminate where it is that we're resisting those changes where we're kind of you know digging our heels in so to speak where there is a hesitancy to move forward to grow to heal we're kind of sitting in it and that's okay sometimes we have to percolate in it in order to really absorb what it is that we are pushing for an ending a closure for and of course releasing so that we can leave these particular energies very much behind. 
Now, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Sag energy is going to be making an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to not be fun. First of all, our impulses are definitely going to be rising to the surface. We have a jittery type of energy, especially when it comes to a looking for validation in our relationship dynamics, kind of, you know, seeking attention, if you will, on getting the validation for our emotions, for our attachments they are, we are currently looking for. We could feel the impulse to spend money. Why? Because Venus is all about spending money, especially if it's to fill the void, the emotional void that she's not fulfilling within her emotional relationship dynamics. So look out for that. The biggest thing here is, though, is that we're kind of seeing the conflict between wanting freedom and independence, and we get that from the Sag energy that Venus is in, versus the intimacy and the soul merging connection, of course, that Venus naturally wants and that the Taurus energy that Uranus is actually retrograde in would support as well. Venus rules over that Taurus energy. We have to keep that in the back of our mind. And so what we're getting here is like this ebb and flow, this back and forth of, you know, I, I want this all consuming connection, this level of being on the same page with the people that I love, but yet we want detachment, we want disconnection so that we can be kind of freed up to do what is best for us. And so we don't want to rock the boat, but of course the inner realm that we're having this battle royale over is not feeling so good. We go to extra lengths in order to mask that because there is this element where we are kind of bored in our relationship dynamics. And we're bored within ourselves. We're bored within what it is that we're building towards. There's a lot more stimulation that is needed. And that Sag energy that Venus is in is really pushing for excitement and for adventure and, you know, for new ways of doing things and new ways of going about life and the back and forth of feeling pulled like we want our own space. We want our own ability to kind of dance to the beat of our own drum and do what it is that we need to do to not be bored within ourselves directly conflicts with the obligations and the commitments that we feel like we have to continue to honor in these very tight knit relationship dynamics as well. So there's just this whole like freedom versus independence type of thing. And it doesn't feel good. And we're trying to strike a balance in that, but it's not coming very easily. And so the more we kind of want to remove ourselves from a situation that we're very connected in, the I'm going to say the thicker the mask needs to be in order to actually hide our fears, our doubts, our insecurities at the moment. And that in itself creates a detachment in the energy exchange of our personal relationships. So the moon goes ahead and sextiles Jupiter shortly thereafter. And this is going to help us out because it's restoring our confidence. It's restoring our self-esteem. It's restoring and renewing the faith that we need to have within ourselves to know that we can create opportunities for growth, for evolution, for closeness, for intimacy, for distance, for independence, all at the same time. The moon in this Pisces energy is very dreamy, very imaginative. So we're kind of living in la la land, trying to conjure up different situations, different scenarios that could potentially make us feel excited again. Now, Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion, he's in this Taurus energy. So it's a very low and slow process of making any changes to our physical realm that would promote the kind of excitement, happiness and joy that we're actually lacking at this present moment. But the visualization, again, we're in January. This is a much needed step in order for us to get in alignment with our heart and soul, with what it is that our heart and soul wants us to pursue. So lucky for us, this is kind of like picking us up out of that earlier funk, making us see a different perspective and putting us in a situation to kind of explore different circumstances and scenarios that we could possibly manifest that may actually fill the void that we're currently feeling within us. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus. So this is a breakthrough. This is an aha moment. This is an epiphany. This is where we're open minded and open hearted to maybe switching things up, trying new methods, trying new things in order to kind of fulfill that void, that emptiness, that space that we recognized 
earlier when Venus and Uranus kind of did this uncomfortable dance of, you know, do I stay? Do I go? Do I want full blown commitment? Do I need detachment? That whole jam. So there is a shake up. There is a wake up. There is a better way being downloaded to us. We are having a lot of very profound insight when it comes to the different things that we could be doing in our physical realm, especially in our relationship dynamics that again are getting a little bit boring, getting a little bit stagnant. The moon in Pisces going to sextile Mars. Mars is the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires. He's in Capricorn energy. The Capricorn energy is kind of pumping the brakes on Mars's ability to take action and make moves. Mars, typically speaking, would like to act on impulse, take action now, worry about the consequences later. But the Capricorn energy that Mars is currently in, not having it. We're calculated. We're deliberate in our actions. We're not wasting any energy. We're not just taking actions and making moves all willy nilly silly. We have to have a plan. We have to have a path. We have to have a direction. The good news is, is that the moon in this Pisces energy, very imaginative, very creative, very inspiring. Mars is getting all hyped up getting ready to go, really bringing this visual into fruition, really understanding the play-by-play -play that we need to take in order to actually bring this vision, bring this dream into life. So this is definitely a pep in our step, if you will, and we are definitely piecing together the proper plan in order to actually take a step forward that is very well thought out, that is very calculated, that is very deliberate, that will have us advancing towards our visions, towards our goals. The moon is then going to semi-square the sun. So anytime that the moon and the sun are interacting in any kind of way, there's always a new aha moment, a new awareness, a new shift in our mental plane, shift in our heart space. Now, this is a tension conflicting filled awareness because of course the moon in this Pisces energy very dreamy very imaginative very kind of out there in la la land and the sun of course shining a bright light in this Capricorn energy doesn't mess around with the la la land we're logical we're practical we're real we are in real time real life situations circumstances and scenarios we actually have a limited type of patience for living in la la land Instead of kind of, you know, living in a what could be, the sun in Capricorn is like, hey, why don't you deal with what is? So this is the conflict. This is the tension point. But the Pisces energy and the Capricorn energy also work very well together when they're in a proper you know, positive aspect because the Pisces energy is visionary. It's inspiring, has new creative force energy. The Capricorn energy can bring it to life. So this is going to be an aha moment, a moment of awareness on where it is that we have to kind of pull ourselves out of dreamland and get to work in the present moment on how it is that we're going to bring some of these realizations to life. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Sag energy going to try and beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. This is some fire on fire energy and we love this. Why? Because fire energy helps us to burn through the cords, the attachments to the past that are really limiting and holding us back. Very regenerative, very passionate, very creative, very initiating. So we are definitely moving more into a heart space where we're motivated to really make a change so that we can build something new, that we can create something new, that we can create a space in our lives, in our physical realms, our physical realities, where peace and harmony and happiness and joy and safety and security and stability are a thing. It's not just a fantasy. It's something that we could actually bring to life. And so this puts us in a situation where we kind of see our goals from a different set of eyes because we're heartfelt, we're heart led with Venus kind of in operation here. And we're understanding where it is that maybe we just need to kind of open up our heart space, open up our head space, make some compromises, cooperate with the energies kind of working against us, so to speak, in order for us to kind of push ourselves closer to our goals, to that visual that makes us happy, that brings a form of excitement that kind of, you know, makes our heart feel warm and fuzzy. This could also put us in a very fortunate situation where we're in the right place at the right time with the right people. We could get lucky in love. We could get lucky with money. We could get lucky with business. We could just kind of be in the space where we're having some aha moments, some epiphanies that's going to help the process and the progress from us moving away from some of the things that we've identified are no longer copacetic for us and really take some major steps towards the vision, the goal, the dreams that of course our heart space is now asking us to pursue. 
the moon in this Pisces energy going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who just re-entered into the Capricorn energy here yesterday on the 13th. If you haven't listened to that astro forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, I'm going to recommend you do that as well so that you understand where the energy is going to be popping off. And there's a lot of pressure in the headspace. Now, the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. These two working very well together. They're on the same page. The Pisces energy, the Capricorn energy, again, really in alignment with each other in a positive interaction. The Pisces energy, very imaginative, very creative, very healing, very karmic in nature. The Capricorn energy wants to plan and strategize on how to bring it to life. Even more than that, if you find yourself in situations with relationship dynamics where you can have a heart to heart, where you can clearly and confidently express yourself, definitely take this opportunity to do so the energy is working in your favor especially when it comes to long-term plans long-term goals the moon is then going to semi-square pluto pluto of course the great transformer himself the final degrees of this capricorn energy that means that the moon is reaching the final degrees of the pisces energy this is a tension filled aspect though we are kind of sitting in the funk sitting in the darkness this is where we get overwhelmed this is where we just want to bury our head in the sand this is where we are realizing how hypersensitive we actually are there's a lot of triggers a lot of activations not because pluto wants to punish us but because we have to feel it in order to heal it and of course the great transformer wants to empower us but how do we empower ourselves we sit in the funk we realize where it is that we have to flip the script where it is that we have to override our narrative our perspective our emotions and pluto is going to help us do just that the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in pisces making a positive interaction with chiron the wounded healer in this aries energy this is going to be an emotional change an emotional transformation for the better we're starting to understand now the fragmented parts of the old self that we're now releasing, that we're now purging, that we're now closing the door on in order to anchor into this new power energy of who it is that we currently are. Of course, we've been going through this rebranding, this ego crisis, this identity crisis type of thing for the last couple of months. We just anchored the new version of self in with the new timelines, not only began under the solstice energy, but really took hold under that new moon in Capricorn. And so now we're starting to see where it is that we're building ourselves up in a better way, where we're feeling stronger, more confident, when we're feeling like we're tapping into a new warrior type of spirit in order for us to jump into new things. And of course, this is prepping us, preparing us for the moon to be moving into the Aries energy that of course Chiron is currently sitting in here tomorrow where of course we are going to initiate a brand new cycle of emotional awareness for us to start integrating for us to start operating on and growing in <laughs>